guys, what's up? It's Andrew from the Checkered Flag Crew, and we're here with Brendan Gone. So you played for the Georgetown basketball team in college. How would you say that would compare to racing? I played football and basketball for Georgetown. Had a brilliant time and, and was very fortunate to, to be a part of the Hoya family. Matter of fact, our first game is today, uh, right, about, right about qualifying time. So I'll, I'll qualify, and then I'll be asking for where my, what the score of my Hoya's game is. But it... Uh, I've always said that John Thompson prepared me for a lot of things in life, including racing, and it was an opportunity that, man, was second to none, and I wouldn't give it up for the world. When did you make the decision that you wanted to be a race car driver over a basketball or football player? Well, if you saw me play basketball, young man, which I, I doubt you saw me play basketball, <laughs> but uh, I was not going to have a basketball career anytime oh. soon. Um, I did want to play football, and I was a very good football player and, and had aspirations to do that, but I did not grow up at tw four years old being in a race car saying this is what I want to do um, I had a father that let me do whatever I wanted and so if we wanted to play football play basketball swim you know be a ballerina he would have supported any of it and I started racing cars when I was 15 and, and was good at it but still played college football and college basketball and then when I graduated college the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series was invented by a bunch of off-road racers and I kept I just I was an off-road racer and they said come drive these trucks so here I am how did you get interested in racing when you were 15? My father grew up, ra grew up racing from the 1960s to the 1990s, even still today. He was a desert racer. Um, those from the West Coast might remember like the Baja 1000 or the Mint 400. That's the type of racing my dad did. And as a little boy, I, we just went out and watched daddy race. And when we got old enough, we started riding with him or playing in the desert. And it was always just a hobby. And my brothers and my father still do it. At what point did you feel like you made it in your racing career? Well, I don't think you ever feel like you made it unless you're Jimmy Johnson with six championships. Um, you know, I'm still doing it, and I'm still having a great time doing it. I still get some sponsorship to do it, still winning races, and that's to me, that's all that matters. As long as I can keep winning races, I still like it. But I never had that moment that said, aha, I'm here. I was honored to drive for Penske. I've been honored to drive for Rusty Wallace. I've been honored to drive for Richard Childress. I've driven for some of the best and some of the greats. and, and uh, you know, hopefully when, when my career's over, they'll say I was a little bit more than just a race car driver, but I didn't do a half bad job at that too. And outside the racetrack, you're also a dive master at Lake Norman. How did you get interested in diving? That was just an accident. Uh, I've been a snow skier since I was two years old. And the guy that was my, my, my ski instructor my whole life is a dear friend and damn near family. He's a scuba, he does scuba diving for fun. And I went on a trip with him for his birthday and went scuba diving and went, this is amazing. And went back got certified and, and as anybody that knows me can tell I'm a little OCD and when I get obsessed about something I go for it so I uh, I help teach classes at Lake Norman Scuba and, and I go over the world to scuba dive I've taught all my nieces and nephews when they turn 12 years old they go somewhere and travel with me I'm the cool uncle so I take them somewhere in the world we go scuba diving and we have a great time and it's 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 a brilliant and amazing sport that is very misunderstood but man I'll tell you what it changed my life how often do you, would you say you go scuba diving? As often as I can. I don't care when or where. If there's some place that you say you can, I can go dive, I will try to bring my gear and go. Matter of fact, if you go up into my locker right now in this lounge, there are about nine scuba regulators that are really? going back to Lake Norman Scuba for service. So if there is water, if there is a, 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 a cave somewhere around here right now, I would grab a regulator and try to go dive. What is the coolest place you've seen or diving? You know, I'm, God, I've been to so many really cool things that most of the world doesn't get to see. Uh, I go to this island called Socorro, the Isla Revilla Hijedos in Mexico, and it's like the Soc uh, Galapagos of the North. B brilliant place, beautiful. I've seen, I've been in the water with an orca and her calf. I've been in the water with humpback whales, lots of sharks. Uh, it, it's, I love the big animals, giant Pacific manta rays. And then I've been to some really cool wrecks. I've been down to the USS Oriskany. Uh, I've been on, you know, into the USS Vandenberg. I've been in a lot of different wrecks over the years. And, and it's just, well, to me, what's cool about it is you're going to a place that maybe less than one half of 1% of the population has ever looked at. And so it's so cool to do these things and to go there and see these animals and see what's made their home and see the history. Is there a place you want to go diving that you haven't gone so far? There are a lot of places I want to go diving that I haven't gone. And when I retire, I'm going to go. Um, I'd love to get to Antarctica and go underneath the ice and see how beautiful that is and see some of the animals that are there because animals there that are nowhere else in the world. Uh, I would love to go to the Galapagos because that's a phenomenal place. But my wife would kill me if I did not say that I wanted to go to Fiji with her because, I mean, come on, it's the South Pacific and it's scuba diving. You can't get any better. What is the hardest thing that you had to do to become a dive master? Uh, you know, it, the hardest thing is just learning how to teach people for most. I enjoy speaking and I enjoy interacting with people. And as a dive master, you're actually helping to instruct a class. So for me, the toughest thing was slowing down my instruction. 
as you can see now, I talk very quickly normally. So for me to try to teach somebody, you can't just do a bunch of motions real fast. They're, they're nervous already. You have to do very slow and deliberate movements. And that was the toughest part for me. But once I got into the teaching role and understood, now I've, I've had a hand in certifying well over 100 students and enjoy the heck out of teaching. Have there ever been any issues with the students? Oh, absolutely. There's students that said, no, they're not going to do it. There's students that have said, I love to do it and then struggle bad. There's students that uh, mostly don't want to take off their mask. Uh, that's, that tends to be the, the toughest part for most people. But uh, had a few things where guys did something and, and almost panicked, got nervous, and you had to you know, put them back into a calm place while they're underwater. Been involved in all sorts of things. But they, uh, Andrew, the owner of Lake Norman Scuba, Andrew and Danielle, they always say that I do really well with people that have a struggle. Like they, they get nervous about something and they just say they're not going to do it. That's when they give them to me. And, and I love taking the people that have flat out said, nope, they're not going to do it. And then get them in front of their husbands or their wives and make them pass them in class because we, we slow it down and we, we do it really well. So I enjoy that. That's awesome. So we're going to do a segment we like to call either or. We're going okay. to provide you with two options and you have to choose one or the other. Okay. All right. So are you an early bird or night owl? Uh, in my 20s, I was a night owl. Now with two kids, I'm an early bird, so I get, I'll give you both. I can't give you one. All right. Chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Vanilla. Winter or summer? Winter. Surfing or skiing? Skiing. Hunting or fishing? Fishing. Books or movies? Books. Tight car or loose car? Loose car. Day race or night race? Ooh, night racing. And finally, since you like skiing and you like diving, which do you prefer, beach or mountains? God, I love both. I love my scuba diving. I love my snow skiing, so I'm going to have to give you both on that one. All right. Thank you, Brendan, for taking the time. For more videos from the Checkered Flag Crew, make sure to follow us on all social media and check out CheckeredFlagCrew.com.